Hello, friends, and welcome to Artists Rendering Tales Collective or Artsy. Today, we're launching a program called Artsy Educational to support home learning and creativity all at once. Artsy, Artists Rendering Tales Collective, is a group of artist educators that promote community engagement and education through the arts. You can find this video and many more at www.artistsrenderingtales.com. We hope you'll visit us there. My name is Lori Sherritt Fleming, and I'm an author, performer, and artist educator. I'm going to be reading for you from a poem I've written in a book called Hungry for Math poems to munch on. The poem is called Raw Ten Dragons and not only is it fun but it can help you to count in groups of ten. I wrote this book with my good friend Carrie Lynn Winters and also the illustrations are done by Peggy Collins who is an amazing illustrator and so much fun as you'll see in just a moment. So I'm going to start with a little read for Artsy Educational. From Hungry for Math, Poems to Munch On. Perhaps you'll find some of these dragons running around your house. Have you ever noticed that perhaps your room was very clean and the next time you went in, it was really messy? That might indicate that there was a dragon there. Let's see what they get up to when they sneak around your house when you're not looking. Look very closely when they think you've left home. Count 50 rotten dragons sneaking out to roam. 10. Slide down the chimney, whooshing through the grime. You'll hear them calling, hey, it's party time. Swimming in the toilet? Diving in the tub, ten more splashing dragons, rub a dub scrub. Hockey in the hallway, scraping up the floor, ten more rotten players, shoot and let's hear it, score! Racing through the office, riding scooter bikes, ten more granny dragons, zoom along, yikes! On the next page, you hear, people are coming, ten more call and hack, all fifty dragons hustle, cleaning up the shack. Oh very closely. They know your home again. Count 50 hiding dragons in five groups of 10. And if you take a moment to really look at the illustrations that Peggy has created, you will see that she has hidden 50 dragons in this picture. I can see some pink ones, some purple ones, some red ones, some green ones. Oh, I think I might have even seen one up in the corner there. I hope you've enjoyed this reading of Hungry for Math, Poems to Munch On from Artists Rendering Tales Collective Inc. or Artsy Educational. If you'd like to have a look at the book further, you can look at it through Fitzhenry and Whiteside or purchase it through Amazon. And I hope you'll join us in a few moments when we create a dragon puppet that you can use for both storytelling and learning about math. Now that you've read about Rotten Dragons, we're gonna create a dragon puppet that you can use to tell your own Rotten Dragon stories at home. Let's start with what I call artistic mise en place, which is a fancy word for saying, getting everything ready. Here we go. If you have a printer at home, go to Crayola.com and look for Dragon Parade Puppet. It's a template that you can print off so you have something to create with. So these are the items that you'll need for your puppet. First of all, we have the Dragon Parade Puppet template from Crayola.com. If you don't have a printer at home, you can actually draw some of the shapes yourself and create 
your own dragon with circles, squares, triangles, or try to match this one here. Next, you'll need some tape, some popsicle sticks, a pair of scissors, some construction paper, some colorful markers, and if you want to get extra creative at the end, when you're finished your dragon, you may even want to add on some ribbons or some streamers. So the very first thing we do is get creative with some color. On my template, I'm going to color the dragon any which way that I want. I can sprinkle a little glitter on there or even tie on some stickers. When I am done with some colorful coloring, I'll be cutting it out. So scissors come in handy and we just go quickly across there. And as you're cutting your dragon out, you want to be careful to cut very nicely around all of the edges and curves that you'll find. Eventually, you'll end up with two pieces like this, the head and the tail, nicely colored and ready to put on to a body. To make the body, I've already pre-cut a piece of construction paper that is the same size basically as the head and as the tail, they'll attach like that. Now, you can see that I've already folded this as well into kind of a fan shape. So I fold it over one, over the other, over one, over the other, until I have my nice fanned out body and I am ready to stick the head and the tail on there. There's the tail. There's our head. And now I'm gonna flip it over and stick on the popsicle sticks, which I like to put close to the head and the tail. There's one. Here's the other. Now we've got a great way to manipulate the puppet so we can almost make it speak to us. What would your dragon say? This is where you can get a little fancy as well. You can tie those extra ribbons on, tape them on the back so when you fly with your dragon, the ribbons fly with you. And you can also take the opportunity to learn a little bit about math. Since we are counting by tens, on the body of the dragon, on each fold, you can add by 10. So I've got 10 plus 10 equals 20 plus 10 equals 30 and so on all the way down the dragon's body. I think he's ready to tell us a story. So the next step is we're going to take our dragon into the kitchen and see what kind of mischief he might get up to. It's Lori coming to you again from the kitchen where the rotten dragon puppet and the rotten dragons themselves have gotten up to quite a lot of mischief. This is the writing part of our show where you guys get to take inspiration from around the house and write a story about it. What do you think this rotten dragon will do? Will he stick his talons into this freshly baked rhubarb pie? Will he take the spaghetti and throw it all over the walls of the kitchen? Will he wear these on his head and dance around? Make a rollabola like the circus out of the rolling pin? Will he throw olive oil all over the floor and make the kitchen a gigantic slip and slide? Well, I don't know. That's all up to you, and while we don't recommend that you actually try these things yourselves, perhaps your rotten dragon might sneak into your kitchen and come up with some great ideas. You can then write about them, draw them, and create your own rotten dragon storybook. We hope you enjoy being creative with our Rotten Dragons. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm Laurie Sherritt for Artsy Educational. Mm -hmm.